start recording. So the recording started. We don't want Zoom, we want Discord. Hey, Fabio. Hey, did I miss the party or not yet? Oh, man, no. You, you've got a couple of Billy No mates in this room. We're just sitting here chatting about printers. That's how exciting this meeting has been so far. And literally, I said their, their meeting is kind of just finishing now. I just checked out Martin's, you know, because he said you and he would be late because you're in the, uh, you know, the other meeting. Uh, I said, well, we better start the recording then and you turn up. So, um, uh, so we're on, we're, right, oh, we're all on with... time now. We're all on time. <laughs> Love it. I can brag with Martin that I was, uh, I, I showed up before him. Yeah. Um, oh man. Yeah. Oh man. Um, right. man. Yeah. Apologies for the, yeah, the Don't timing. Worry. Like, yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy week. Yeah. Or month or year. <laughs> tell, tell me about it. life. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was born and I've been going, what the hell's been going on for like ever since? It's like, <laughs> right, let me bring up the doc. So uh, I've got it on my other monitor. Um, yeah, and you haven't started the recording yet, right? Yeah, I have started the recording. So it's just going to get us. Okay. But I can stop the recording and we can. Oh, no, 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 no. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if people are seeing that my cat whiskers on the yeah. camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, while you pull that up, um, we just got one of those cat cushions for my son. He's going to college, and he's, uh, he's he loves the cats. So we're like, give this is for you to not miss your cats. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna be the same thing with the whiskers on the camera. It's yeah, the live experience is different. Yeah. Uh Sam, you know, my middle son, he's the same age as Leo, I think, or just a bit older. Yeah. He's, got, oh, he's off to university in September. Um, Mary is making a patchwork quilt for him, which is the most mum thing I can think of. So nice. He's, he's going to turn up with his little patchwork quilt that he can put on his bed and think of home when he's missing us. Well, he won't think of home at all. He's probably going to be sick on it after all the student parties or something like that. But, you know. <laughs> I hope so. That's yeah, what that's college what, is for. Yeah, exactly. mostly. It mostly, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. I'm. This is slow coming up. Google Docs is half. Okay, it's brought it up now. Okay. So, um, serious hat on. Serious hat on. Perfect. I think that was one of your Euro Pythons, wasn't it? Um, okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> serious hat on. Uh, okay. So um, it's the community call, and um, there are no announcements in the agenda. Um, as we've said, uh, I'm not sure, Fabio, if you've been in one of the meetings since we've started doing this. We've done it for two or three meetings now. Um, before the agenda items, we just put down what our upcoming work and priorities are so that from week to week people could see what we're working on and we can just sort of sync and things like that uh so first up is andrea yep yeah. um so basically uh, the uh, the upcoming priority to me is to release as soon as we can uh, because today i just fixed a regression that uh, uh, somehow we indirectly introduced in, in PyScript. Um, I'm saying indirectly because we asked PyUdide to, to, to provide this kind of um, magic map that acts like a map, but it works also as an object literal that plays super well with uh, all the JavaScript APIs that very rarely ex expect a map as an option object, as a configuration, or you name it. Uh, turns out because this is a proxy, it cannot survive the uh, worker to main and automatically. So we need to transform that map, proxy map, into a real map whenever that happens. Because maybe some third party is 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 using the PyUdide native FFI to JS, and that produces that kind of map. Um, we didn't address that case. So um, if if you are wondering what's broken right now panel panel with bokeh uh, on the main thread is is broken if you run panel in a worker with pyodide it's not going to be able to communicate to the to the to the main thread 
Um, that has been fixed. There are tests in place. They already published all the things to NPM to let people test stuff. Um, people from the uh, panel repository uh, were, were very, very nice to track down all the pyodide versioning that versions that were either working or not working, working on the main, working on the worker, working maybe, working somewhere, um, with a PyScript uh, with a PyScript version that was also mapped uh, along these lines. And uh, um, and so super thankful for them because it, it, it was a, a proper issue report or and it was done somewhere else unfortunately, but uh, it, it was our fault and everything is fixed. Um, beside these, which was a regression, and so panel is currently pretty broken if it, if it runs in a worker, um, there are other things that have been improved in the whole stack. So coincident has been rewritten, we have uh, more options when it comes to um, atomics and asynchronous workers providing just uh, um, uh, utilities. In that case, we don't need service worker, we don't need uh, mini coil, we don't need uh, special headers, we don't need anything, it just works. Um, and uh, when we do need those things, we have at least three options. Documentation has, has been updated, and so everything looks ready to, to go. But uh, as far as I know, we also want to uh, the, um, bring in the latest Martin and Nicholas effort to the plate. So that's my priority. Let's do this be also because we are all going on vacation at some point. And mm -hmm. the sooner we release, uh, the more time we have eventually, if we really badly, if we did something badly wrong, uh, we, we have we eventually time to fix it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. definitely. Okay. Uh, um, for me, um, uh, so first of all, um, vacation. Uh, I like how that suddenly appeared as I'm looking at the uh, at the document. Um, so for me, apologies to um, uh, to Andrea. This is why we got onto talking about printers for the first fifteen minutes. Uh, but uh, the documentation PR that he put in, I was in the middle of editing and then we had a printer meltdown at my house and Mary had a concert this afternoon. So I spent two hours trying to fix a damn printer. So uh, so when I mentioned this to Andrea, his first comment back was, so you do fix printers then, uh, which I thought was <laughs> a bit cheeky. Um, but more seriously, uh, yes, agree, we should be releasing. Um, I wonder whether we can do that on Thursday. I don't know. Let's see how we go through tomorrow, getting the things kind of ticked off um, the kind of the, the list. But I agree with you. Um, I'm off on Friday. It's my wedding anniversary and Mary's booked something. So she said, could you take it off? So that's good. So I'm going to take Friday off. So I'm not going to be here, but I will be here clearly the next two weeks until my holidays. Um, I've been uh, working on those on that test framework thing today. Um, uh, and we had a really good conversation yesterday uh, going through the developer experience feedback. And I think we're very aligned with uh, with testing. So that's the thing that's on my kind of roadmap is to try and help us get testing and things done. And that's just part of the wider experience of making our open source code base friendly, accessible, you know, a beginner friendly where beginner may mean you need a PhD in JavaScript, but at least you know where everything is sort of thing, you know, all of that sort of stuff so that um, we, we're cleaning all that up. Um, I also, uh, another blip on my radar, and this is coming after the API names that we're talking about today, is how can we start to add Pythonic versions of get me my GPS coordinates or, um, you know, you know, all the built in browser APIs that we've been talking about. Um, so I'd like to, you know, drive that forwards as well. Um, and there was something else which kind of been that important because it's kind of gone straight out of my head. I'm sure I'll remember it. But anyway, there was something else. Oh, what was it? Oh, yeah. Had a two hour discussion with Damien today. Um, caught up on MicroPython things, um, which is very good. Um, but other than, there's nothing really much to report about that apart from MicroPython seems to be taking over the universe. But Damien would say that. Um, uh, but it's uh, it, it's going well. Um, so there's that. Um, Fabio, uh, uh, your upcoming priority is vacation, which is perhaps the best priority to have whatsoever. <laughs> uh, Martin, do you want to add anything here or not? I mean, it's fine if you just go, no. 
Uh, vacation for me as well. Awesome. That's, That's all my need. priority. <laughs> okay, so we'll yeah. move on to... With, with that said, with that said, I do hope to cut off some small time, probably as soon as I'm back, the, not next week, the following, because uh, I still have some time off, um, to actually work on just sanitizing the... Actually making an improvement, making progress in the test... Um, integration between the many tests that we have, um, yeah. at least to just make sure that when we run integration tests, it also runs the test tests. <laughs> and so um, we, we should talk or oh, pair on it or something like that. Exactly. You know, I, this is, I yeah. would love to work on that. And if the, the more the merrier, because the, the more eyes working on this together. And a pairing Perfect. session would mean at least two of us understand what's going on. Um, if there are more yeah. in the room, then that's even better because, you know, as we all know, I don't need to explain it to, to you folks, but I'm saying it for the purpose of viewers at home. The reason you do pairing isn't because somebody's checking your work. It's because, you know, everybody knows how that piece of code works. Um, which yeah, is exactly. And you get all the input from everybody's ideas, which is, is what we need. Okay. So I'll move on to the agenda items if there's nothing else. And there's only one agenda item that I added, but this was kind of added uh, because basically all four of us want to talk about it um, and hopefully the wider community, but they've not turned up. So uh, there we go. Uh, we can at least point them at this video. Um, and that is the API naming uh, and structure. Uh, I, uh, If you don't mind, I'll give a 10 second overview for people who may be watching later on and then we can just get at it but um, essentially we provide a PyScript namespace in which we have a whole bunch of um, uh, objects methods whatever's uh, an API essentially that we guarantee will work the same way in both PyDide and MicroPython um, so uh, for instance we have a fetch uh, method that fetches stuff from the web and we have a WebSocket class that allows you to make a WebSocket connection and it works in the same way um, this is very useful. Uh, it's We intend it to be Pythonic because often underlying all of this is an API that's written for JavaScript that doesn't feel Pythonic, if you see what I mean. So we're trying to help Pythonistas who may be not familiar with the browser have an obvious place where, how do I do this thing? Oh, there's an API for it. Ah, I see where it is and they can go do it. And it's well documented and we support it. Um, the problem we have is that it is flat. Everything is in that single namespace, uh, more or less. There are a couple of exceptions. Um, and we are getting to a point where there's just too much stuff or there's stuff that's related to each other that should be under a child namespace. For instance, to continue the example, PyScript.net.fetch or PyScript.net.webSocket. I'm using that for illustrative purposes. We might not use .net, but you see what I mean. The important mm -hmm. thing is that we need... Uh, uh, we had a discussion about this. Making changes is never a good idea unless it's a good idea uh, because it's going to cause disruption. But at the same time, if you're going to make a problem, if you're going to make a problem for other people, you can see it's a Freudian slip going on there. If you're going to make a problem for people, uh, then you might as well do it sooner rather than later. OK, because as PyScript's popularity grows, it's going to be more difficult for us to make these more fundamental changes. So if we can do two things, is my understanding, um, so shoot me down if I've got this wrong. But there are two things that we need to figure out. Number one, how do we organize the current namespace so that we've got them bucketed in the right kind of child namespaces? And the second thing we need to sort of figure out is, should we wish to introduce new child namespaces? How do we do that? What's the process of further kind of updates and things like that? So we've got everybody's favorite two topics, naming and updating. Um, so Fabio, you started PyScript. I, I cede the floor to you. Just let the love begin. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I Actually, my comment was even before that, just aligning on the things that we need to, I, we think we need to do. Uh, I think it's, I see it a, a little more than two things. I see it as, I think we need to identify the, the structure we would like, like the namespacing and stuff. And then, Basically, looking at the namespacing today and then thinking of a possible migration strategy or whatever it is, right? Because I, I do think very strongly that we need to do the namespacing and move stuff that we have 
uh, at root level to to some namespace. At the same time, there are I I do think there are some special uh, citizens like either methods or or flags and stuff that I I even if they end up in nested namespace I think it's totally fair to have an alias because every project project just use them uh, and things like this like the when decorator for instance I would like to have a discussion is it is it worth keeping at root level even if we move there or or other stuff like the um, um, document or you know. All of those, I think it, it we need to do a specific discussions around them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the core, I agree with you that there are two things, but there's some details in the middle. Oh yeah, I I think there are in my mind's eye we're we're very aligned with this. There are some objects, methods, whatever they are, that I feel should always be in the root because they are so fundamental. If you see what I mean, and you kind of named. Um, I, I think they were the first things that we actually added to the PyScript namespace, and that is document and window and the when decorator as well. They feel like they're kind of fundamental things. Um, I like your idea of aliasing um, as a transition thing, uh, um, but we make that transition last a long time. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's it's like, let's call it nine months or something like that. But, you know, come this time next year, it's not going to be where you think it is. Um, but don't say we didn't warn you. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to work out how folks want to do this process. I mean, I can share my screen and bring up the current docs for uh, the API that gives us, um, because of the nature of the web page, the flat list of what the API is. And then we can just go from the top down and go, what do you think? Or it might be, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, there are some that are a higher priority than others. For instance, PyScript.web. Um, how, you know, let's let's tackle that first, and and then that unblocks you, Martin, and we can sort of pick off the other stuff in the meantime, and that could add, it could happen, and then in a subsequent release or something. So, um, let me. Um, oh man. Okay, so uh, why isn't this working? Okay, so all of a sudden, I can't change. I can't get. Oh man. Okay, so my computer. Need to go get to fix the printer. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I need to go fix a printer. Uh, I I can't. I can tab change to a different app, but I don't see it. Uh, all I can see is Discord. So I think Discord might have crashed and has control over my screen or something like that. Um, can I? Oh, maybe it's because I'm full screen. Yes, it's because I'm full screen. Okay. So, hang on a second. Docs.pyscript.net. And if I go to Discord and share my screen, uh, screens, entire screen, go live. It worked. It worked. Good. So, uh, in this built in API thing here. So, essentially, it's all of this down here. And we split them into three sections. So we've got all the common features, stuff that just only works with uh, on the main thread and stuff which only works on the worker. But these are mostly um, inevitably about, you know, inter-process communication between the worker and the, um, and the main thread. Um, so um, I think what I will do is crack open uh, um, vim api.txt and uh, I can take notes in here whilst we're also looking at over here. Uh, can, um, can folks see what I'm typing in here? Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, um, show these, I, I rearranged these because I'm a bit OCD into alphabetical order as well <laughs> a couple of releases ago. Uh, don't laugh. Um, so I don't know. Let's let's shall we ta start with PyScript.web because that's the that's the important one uh, that's blocking at the moment. So um, so I don't know, Martin. What do you think? Yeah. So my proposal the other day was, and I'm assuming uh, well, again, obviously the community will let us know, but I'm assuming that there's not that many users, right? Because we've 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 moved this over from the old PyDom. Yeah. 
Um, so it'd be interesting to hear, get some feedback from how many people have switched over to it. But because it's relatively new, I thought, um, you know, we're just, and we've just we've just been polishing it. I thought it'd be good to name this, um, you know, hopefully not too um, cause too much trouble if we rename, if we do a little bit of shuffling on the naming now. But my proposal on this was so right now I have to in like the web.dom and the web.elements are kind of separate and we've got an alias in PyScript.web so you can say import dom because we've got that in the end in, in it but but my proposal was that if we had PyScript.web I'm not sure dom's the best word right but one module that you import all of this layer at so I would say from PyScript dot something import. Yes, because to be honest, this is the, the star is often how I work in this. Me personally work because then I start typing, right? Body dot append. I can say body dot append a div and a button and some buttons. Um, and it's also, some, <coughs> sorry, also not, in, yeah, I, I would argue we I'm not sure if we should encourage that uh, import star um, in general, um, but I see the, the point. <clears throat> I agree in general. It, well, obviously, I agree in general. But um, whenever I whenever I use GUI frameworks where I've got a bunch of literally, I want I want access to the wid the widget set, right? Yeah, exactly. This I could do from Postgres import body head p mm -hmm. div whatever you wanted to do yes you could you could do that as well but my point is still i get it from one place and then i can say in here body.append um and so my proposal right now what we what we do is you say from pyscript.web import dom and then you say dom.body.append <laughs> and, and and my um and my thought was um so and one of the reasons we did this we did that was that we have classes. We have Python classes for every HTML element type, so it, or tag, you know. So there was a body class, and so I we didn't want that to be too confused with the body class, confused with the instance of which is the document, the actual document's body, right? But then I realized the other day, I said, well, we can. It's, it's very unlikely, you, you know. What does PyScript.web do for us? It one of the things it does is allow us to create you can actually create your UI in Python code instead of having to write it in HTML. And and you're unlikely, and it's probably going to fail, right, to try and create a body element. I don't know, actually, Andre, even if that's possible, Manu, whether it just says, I'm sorry, you can't have bot another body element. And you're unlikely... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're unlikely to want to create a head element, which means those classes, even though they exist for completeness... So, for example, if I say if I create a div on my page and I say div dot parent, it's going to give me a, a an instance of an element still of the appropriate type. But body, the actual classes could be body underscore head underscore, such that body. If we expose the term body, I can still say body dot append straight away. Body dot append div. Blah 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 blah. That'd be it. Yeah, we had this discussion uh, multiple times, <laughs> and I we, think right. But I think, it, as with everything, you need time to get out of the current state, move to a transition one that makes more sense, and then you can get your head out of the clouds and see the bigger picture. I think we're trying to compensate for the fact that we had a mix. We we couldn't really find the best balance between compensating for the query or single tone elements, like. The, the DOM interface is the query interface, right? And the body had all of those special ones are basically special things. They're singletons. They, they, they don't behave just like the paragraph or uh, a div and other things. So I think that's, and we chose probably the wrong way around. Um, so if, I think we need to answer the question first, what is the priority? <clears throat> um, for the web namespace, is it creating elements and creating interfaces, and the query API is just one thing that we live separately, <laughs> or the opposite? Right? Are you using right, right. that interface to query more or to create more? Yes, <clears throat> but the query interface is intimately tied with 
the, the element interface, right? Because it returns. what it, it returns actually elements are all part of the same thing. So here's my fundamental smell. If I show, can I share my screen, Nicholas? Yes, please do. Yeah. I can find the button, which doesn't it's do seventh, something. It's seventh different. one on the right under the uh, signpost that says do not click. Screen share, you're, you're streaming, go live. There we go. Awesome. Um, so that's a bunch of cause madness that you don't want to really see. Uh, so let me go to the Pi script. Okay. We, so here's, uh, hang on, hang on. You're sharing your Discord. Oh, yeah. Let me try again. Stop streaming. Share your screen. Oh, applications. And I got it. There was yeah. 72 buttons to press. Yeah. If only they could afford UX people. Um, so here we are. So can you see now? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Right. So this is, um, I don't need to do this, right? So this is my, my big smell right now. Forget I can't see a thing. It's just two squares moving around. What's going on? Uh, oh. That's connectivity at your end. Uh, I yeah, can see I think it. so. I can see it fine. You so, can see it fine? Okay. Yeah. Let me, try it here. Let me get rid of this. So if I want to start, so my big thing is here. So say currently when I want to, if I wanted to create a div with a couple of buttons in it, this is the current situation in terms of the namespace, right? Div uh, dom.body.append. And so I would have, I've got, I've got two, two sets of imports. I, I import two things, which I'm already bored by the time I've typed the second from, right? I can hear a lot of noises in my brain. I can't see what's going on on Discord because like... Wow! No, sorry, it was it was me uh, reconnecting. Oh. I really can't see anything from uh, from your screen. You see what Copilot just suggested that, by the way. <laughs> Would I? Is my previous example? So, um, so say I wanted to do all that, which let's say I I did. Um, so this is what I have to type right now, right? This is me like making it such that my index.html, the only thing it has is importing PyScript, imports my main.py. So my entire user interface is done um, here in Python, right? So, and so right now the smells for me from a, as a user is I'm looking at this go, I don't want to import statements, right? And I, prob and I maybe don't want the word DOM in there, right? Um, who knows? But so this is for me, it's like, so my proposal was something, and again, I don't know what it is, right? But I, I just don't want to write two import statements because this is probably what I'm, the kind of thing that I'm going to start typing, right? Create some style, create some buttons, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go uh, when any any button is clicked, I'm going to get a click event. This is all Copilot, not me. Oh, and it's working out if I wanted to do colors or blah, 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 right? But this... So, so yeah, so this was the smell to me, right? And so if I look at if I look at DOM, right? What is the so this is the entirety of the DOM thing, right? But it's but it's yeah. intimately it's intimately tied to the elements. Yes. So I, the context here that we discussed several times: should we rename DOM to find and make body and had a single tone there as part just of the element uh, namespace that's we went i'm not suggesting it that's a, something that we brought up several times right because it we we felt that smell several times right and and again yeah. i think it's combining the two different purposes of the, the apis one is querying the other is creating or manipulating the dom uh, Nicholas, and yeah. then I think okay. Andrea, yeah, one yeah, of those. Yeah, two. exactly. I, I was smiling because I could see us all lining up because we all want a piece of this pie. Um, <laughs> it's good fun, and this is one of the reasons you know why I enjoy being an engineer. It's these sorts of really wonderful chats. Um, as we're discussing this, always at the back of my mind is if I wanted, if I'm a teacher, and I know this API is not for teachers, right? This is a academic exercise, a thought experiment. But if I'm a teacher. And I want to explain this, say, I'm a teacher, a professional trainer explaining PyScript to, say, a bunch of experienced software engineers. What would I want to explain? OK, um, so that everybody in the room sitting around the table watching me explain this 
is nodding and going, oh, these PyScript folks have really thought out, you know, a, a, a nice API. Um, and so if we go back to the code, yes, thanks, Martin, to that, it feels to me, PyScript.web feels like that's that, that, that kind of makes sense. We're talking about a web page here. I think I would love... Um, can we not call it DOM? Because that only that's only meaningful to people who already know what a DOM is. Can we call it something like page, which is kind of what it represents? But a page is an instance of the DOM class. Okay. Um, something like that. This is my intuitions, by the way. And it's all straw men, shoot them down, that sort of stuff. But it feels like... Um, it, it feels like... Yeah, and from that, you can then say page.find button for instance. Um, so I'm finding from the page everything that's a button, for instance. Um, I also, I, I just want, I I know why you're saying it, Fabio, and I agree with you. Um, uh, but we have, because there's a huge number of uh, element types, tags, um, and you're not quite sure when you start, which ones you'll need. So I, I'm imagining, I, I kind of agree with uh, Martin here, that you are going to go, from PyScript.web import star. And I want all those element classes in the top level PyScript.web. Um, so I can then say, I now have page.find this thing. I can then do page.body.append arbitrary HTML based classes, uh, class instance, um, instances of, you know what I mean, the, 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 basically the DOM that, that Martin's building up here. And that just feels to me like that's a single import. Everything's kind of called what it should be. And the elements feel like they're in the right place. So I can just star import everything because I'm not quite sure what I need um, when I start this sort of thing. Um, does that I mean, make sense? I I, I'm not necessarily advocating for the start. I don't mind whether or not. So in this particular case, right, the only things I've used are button, div, and style, style yeah, right? Exactly. So I, I don't act, I don't actually mind if I do that, right? What I so all my concern is this. Yeah. Like so I'm quite happy to do this. Like I don't I mean I'm not happy to do I'm happy to do this. And maybe I'll do that, but I don't want two separate imports because to me they're very similar things. They're closely related. It's the yeah. thing it's like I said, if we look in here, this this immediately imports from elements, right? So this object already relies on from the element and the element collection right and so the notion of that yes whatever we i'm just saying from a user's perspective right i just don't want to have to put two imports i want these i feel that these concepts are related right um andrea you've been very very andrea, yeah sorry i can't see when i'm sh when i'm demoing sorry andrea yeah, likewise. I couldn't see anything you demo already for some reason, and it's the first time that happens to me. But anyway, um, two two topics. Uh, the first one is: Can you replace the document body? Yes, you can, because both body and a head in the document are getters. Um, you cannot assign that those, but you can reach whatever body you have. So you can just create element body, replace the current body with a new element body, and okay. have document dot body. Okay pointing at that is this useful to anyone at all i'm not sure i don't think so i've never done that in my life <laughs> 20 <laughs> plus years. but um there are single page applications use cases i can think on top of my head where you just change page page and you just want to replace the body and maybe the head to have all the new things in but i don't even know if you change it with the head means that all the scripts are going to run again so i don't think it's a good practice i don't think it's used at all so i will say it's okay i think it's fine to say body and head are singleton and are referring to the current document body and head so that should that should be a no-brainer um but so my, my thought about that was right right the symbol body can refer to the to the inst to the singleton instance and head wherever it lives can refer to it and if you ever did want to do that right we give you a class called that right to just to, to disambiguate can't see yeah yeah all, all, all I'm saying is that the body you could 
the JavaScript could replace the body with something else. And at that point, your PyScript application behind the scene will not work anymore because you have a body that is not a body anymore. Right? So that, that's all I'm saying. Um, the second thing is the import star. So I agree with Fabio. I, actually, we don't have that in JavaScript. So you import star as something. So you always have a reference. The import star in the Python way is more like a wait statement. So it's like wait the star, whatever content is, is in this module just refers to that. And the only thing that worries me a little bit is that because somebody mentioned already the HTML has dozen, if not hundreds of elements, you import star. And for instance, we now we are exposing P, div, um, but what about I? I for italic, so, mm. or M. So imagine you have import star and then you have uh, for I in range 0, 10, whatever, and you want to create a list and the list contains the I element in there. Uh, how's it going to work? So I think explicit naming import as boring and probably um, uh, verbose as it is give us two things. The first one is that if we did an exp export um, canvas element, it throws an error because there was no canvas in that module. And, and you don't expect just canvas to be not a reference, it's not a thing. So you always know what you're importing and you have early feedback on what we did and export already. So I, I think it's cool the way it works, but at the same time I'm thinking, is that the best, the best we can do? Because I see a lot of not even edge cases, I see a lot of confusion that could go on if we start exposing a lot of elements that have names that can conflict with internal variables in the module and you start having troubles understanding mm -hmm. what is what. Um, and that's that's my only concern around that import star uh, thing. Yeah, so like I said, I'm not, so the import star, I don't want that to be like a, a, fo become a focus, right? That's just how... I will pretend I and many others, right, will potentially work on some on at some level, whether it's a tiny little simple app because I don't want to import everything. But maybe but my point is that that's really that's really not my big question here, my, because like I said, I'm quite happy to do this and import everything or even import the something. But my it's really for me, it's the combination of these two things. Where does my we we've, we've got we've got a few things that we need, right? We've got um, a bunch of element classes. So we've got, we've got uh, div, p, uh, a, blah, 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 blah. That they're the symbols that we've got. We've also got the idea of the body and the head um, objects, which are uh, uh, what we call them, the actual instances, right? Um, Martin, and then oh, we... okay. I was just going to say, it's coming out all blurred but as soon as oh. i said your name it's... yeah i'm not sure uh, yeah i saw this i thought it was my connection no. i'm not sure how much martin can actually do around it yeah. i think it might it's be... really yeah it might it's... we're up in the mountains so <laughs> it may not be no, the it's best. All good i think yeah. we can it, yeah sorry fabian oh no I, I think a couple of things T trying to so okay on the star topic i think it's a different topic i think andrea and i are aligned the um, the even if there were no ish difference in terms of uh performance memory usage and things like this uh even that i would still try to avoid uh suggesting it in any way like yeah it will just work if you and if you know what you're doing great do it but for most users it just opens up for a lot of scenarios where you you have naming overload and other things and it just creates confusion uh so uh, that uh, that's my opinion there on the i i, I totally agree i totally agree with, I with we that we all agree right? with you yeah 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 we but, all agree with it but my but my point is my point is not that right that's the thing that's just that, no, no, no. that was a red herring. and i think i was going to address your the other i think the point is I think we all agree that it would be beneficial to be just able to import everything from the set, the, the level of dot web, whatever it is, namespace, right? right? Yeah, we all agree. I think the problem really is the names or the naming conventions so that we make it work. Like that, the example that 
Nicholas made with Paige. We went through that scenario too, like exactly Paige. Like, and we said, maybe we don't do Paige for now because it requires discussion. And is it ambiguous? Uh, what does it mean to add to the page? Are you adding to the body? Are you adding to the head? How do you distinguish those two? Things like this, right? Um, so I think just going over those small details will help us align on a direction. But I think as a North Star, I think we're aligned uh, on the need. So, okay, can I share my screen so I can write down what I think the import looks like and we can all kind of agree that this yeah. is a general shape i'm just anxious that we actually get tangible yeah. this is the this is the thing that we're doing uh, yes nicholas real quick because i have to leave in two yeah. minutes my just to share my thoughts um i think if we find the right relation and balance between like let's say age and body and head and where you're trying to find your elements then we're good like as of now like personally I, my question is why don't we just have a, a fine method and it just searches it's just fine and it's a replacement a name replacement for dom uh it also doesn't conflict with uh elements name uh, the elements that we support and things like this but again we yes, haven't had the discussion yeah. yeah, and that's what we talked about, right? That's what we talked about potentially doing, we, and we experimented with it, right? We had find body and head at the top level, so you could just import them, right? And the problem that we had before, which was that, oh, maybe that's confusion because the body clashes with the name of the class body, the body instance. And then it was only, there was only then where I realized, well, you're unlikely to want to use the class body and the class head anyway, so why not just pre suffix them with something to um disambiguate but i think it's yes i think it's clear that we got like i was just trying to type then before it all got blurred there's really three things that we're doing right we've got element class names is what we've got the class names of each element we've got the body and head names which refer to instances potentially and we've got the find and that's and they're the three things which we're trying to find homes for in the namespace right so, that to me is the is the key thing yeah and, and like so, I'm so quite, I suggest to me I'm, I'm, we 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 re so i can't see you so i can't see who's got their hand up or not so apologies if i've kind of <laughs> trundled on in but uh page is an instance of what is currently dom capital d dom and so we get this that to me feels like i want you know page dot body dot append a thing this is the instance of the body in the current web page sort of thing is how i'm imagining my inner uh, inner inner voice everybody has an inner voice right i'm not going mad uh uh and then in the same uh level as page which is the only kind of special thing everything else in dundrawl is uh is a is a element like that p or div or something um does, does that make yeah, sense I it does. Shape. Um, it, it does. Go back to the yeah. Best of the code. Thanks. So I liked. So for me, there's a couple of things here. So there's the where do we put the stuff which we've written in PyScript.web, and then was how do we make this namespace useful and extensible for or like the API layers and stuff beyond it. But because um, for example, I we don't even need page if we don't want to, right? We could have. Um, body, head, and find just as top level symbols. Yeah. Well, quite. The only problem we've well, got. That, couldn't that be they, from PyScript.web.page? From PyScript.web.page, import body, P, D, and everything else. Yeah, or, or yeah, and uh, dot page could be it. Page could be the, mod the module level, or UI could be the module level, or. Or UI, yeah. Yeah, like, which is what say, say that again. Uh, so, so what are you expecting me to type here? Tell me what I'm should be I should be typing here from PyScript dot web dot web dot page import p div find that could be that or it could be from PyScript dot web dot ui import p div find yeah, body but, but, you know. But, but what does web dot page give us? That's two levels in a hierarchy. Yeah, you know? I know. Yes, I don't right. know what I don't know what's under dot you know dot web then. 
I mean, maybe it can maybe. <laughs> so, so, I heard it, that. <laughs> or, or it could be from. Do we even need page? Why not from PySkit.web import body div body find? So it could just be that. So body head, and then the rest are just regular elements. Yeah, that's what you're saying. So and there is find, a... and find is also. A... Yeah, so, so I could, you, and yes, yeah, so so if you wanted to recreate, recreate that example that I did, right, you, you just need to import one more, well, just instead of P, you'd import button, right? And then you've got, you wouldn't need head. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that would be it. Button yeah. did find. And then, and then, so let me get rid of this. I want to make sure we're clean about this. But we also have... Um, but then the no, question is... Yes, so those classes already exist. So if I did want to create a new body element, or no, because I'm doing... or, or I'm returning after a find, are we going to get a head or a body? No, we're not. You would, yeah. You... Well, no, you could because what if what if I've got a top level div and I say div dot parent for some reason, then div dot parent yeah. okay. will give me or a the, body. Or you're given the body an ID, my body or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you so the. Yeah, so those classes would exist just suffix, just so there's no, because they're, like they're kind of you're unlikely to want it. Because a lot of this, right? What what does it? What does a lot of this buy you? It buy the the, the PyScript.web buys you the ability to create mostly the ability to create your user interfaces in Python. Yeah. Right. Because you can if if you've written it all in HTML, you don't necessarily need to interact with it using the PyScript.web interface, you can just use the normal PyScript interface. Right? I can say document.query selector all, blah, blah, blah. Mm. The biggest thing that this gives you, gives us is a nice declarative way or imperative way, your choice, yeah. to create your user interfaces, right? Yeah, I like I like this. Um, so I have a question about the internals of it. I'm assuming we're still going to have a PyScript.web.elements from which in PyScript.web.dunder in it, we're going to import a whole bunch of them so they're all. I mean, I mean we, we could have, yeah. The thing is, like, you saw, saw the code, code where, that we currently have. The dog, we, we have, in, in the dunder in it is where we define um, the, the DOM object right now, right? But, and we could, yeah, we could just, yes, we could just do that. We could we could so, still so keep you, it as yeah. a separate as a separate module, right? Element, but the like the DOM code is this big, yeah. the elements code is this big. That little bit of DOM code imports from elements anyway, so it's almost like, well, what do I really need? Yeah. So in fact, what we're having is uh is just a. So what we what we're going to end up is with a uh it's a web dot py that is the same as um so dunder in it plus <laughs> elements equals uh web dot py is what you're saying yeah, yeah mate, mate I, yeah, I just, I, I, to me i'm not sure that it buys me much having the the separate. definition of the dom living in a separate module yeah. uh, the dom the methods the body the instances body head and find in a separate module i'm like yeah i agree I agree. And and find is essentially just um, the, the body dot or whatever is it is, you know, HTML dot find, document dot yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, 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 all in a single module web dot py. There we go. Rather than having a package with two modules in it you know one for the dom and one for the elements or something okay are, are you but then the... okay I yes, knew there's so, gonna so... be a but <laughs> yeah. no no so so yeah so i like that yeah and then the thing is but for me then it's like okay when we're okay so where would you were talking about we need some kind of apis or the sensors or the sounds or the speech like i think so that so I looking at that right now I'm like that's lobby. lovely I've got one import I go from PyScript.web, import fine by that I do my examples brilliant I'm good to go but um 
And so from a PyScript, a web person, I'm happy, but then I'm like, okay, well, but where are we going in the future with speech, for example? Because we know, for example, we've already written the speech.py for an event, right? Yeah. So I want to delete like, that we... and just use PyScript. Exactly. So it where would, to be in where PyScript, would... yeah. Where would speech live? Where would sensors live? Where would that stuff live? Yeah, I, I potentially, and it, because of the, only because I know the size of that speech module, I probably wouldn't even have two separate modules for that. I'd have one speech module which has both things in it. So you would. Are you saying that? So okay. So what you would say is in in my code. I'd say, oh man, yeah. I, I hate Macs because their keyboards are all blooming backwards and knackered and upside down. Uh, right. That's what I wanted. So in my code, I would say something like import PyScript. I would say from PyScript dot speech. Um, it, if I was doing a from, I would say. Um, say and listen because that's what we got right say yeah. this and listen to that yeah okay so um so i'm trying to work out the heuristics the kind of the design pattern for the name right exactly yes so what and that's the, the, other, the, other, the other thing for me about pyscript.web right it's kind of like it's I think there is useful. Okay, so one of the things I did do the other, the other week was mess around with Electron, right? So I can actually write PyScript applications that are desktop applications. So the word web has some meaning. Yeah. But in the other cases, like, this is all web. Like, speech is web. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's, yes, it's, but it's a browser. It's, yeah. But, 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 yes. But then I'm talking about, so the word web, when we're importing find body head button div, you know, uh, that first one is like, is web the right thing? Or is it PyScript.UI or PyScript.Page or PyScript.something? And then PyScript.Speech and PyScript. I don't know. It was just yeah. questioning the word web in the PyScript.Web. That was all. Uh, PyScript, I don't know. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what Andrea thinks. Um, PyScript.Web. PyScript.Nam.Verbs. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. As, the, as the pattern. So what is this? Wait, it's about speech. Okay, as in, you know, the name of a thing that you can do uh but what can that thing do well you can say things with it you can listen to things so another example of that might be um we'll get back to what you call the web um uh, from pyscript dot geo import location for instance right um or yeah, i mean on the browser all these APIs are trashed on the global, uh, in the global context. Yeah, 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 so yeah exactly. We, we're doing the same, except it's not the global context, it's PyScript audio. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's fine. As long as there is separation uh, and not everything comes from the same blob, uh, I think it's fine. And I think web is fine. I, I like UI, but, but I, I like web too. Yeah. Um, although it's all web because PyScript is... It, it, it's about writing Python in the web. Um, so maybe UI is better, but then I don't know, or page. I don't know, but I don't have strong opinion there. I think I will I be think, fine with all of this. Yeah, like I said, I was messing around the other week running, writing a PyScript application that you that ran in Electron, right? So it was a desktop app. And I was like, oh, would we? I was like, oh, that's interesting. Would we have things which work specifically for Electron? It's like, um, and so that, therefore the web namespace suddenly is useful because although to be fair, you know, an Electron app, I probably still have a body and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. The same. Yeah. Um, also, you need to bridge um, Electron extra abilities if you want to, but that's that's all doable. Uh, been there, done that. Um, <laughs> no, the only, yeah. the only thing is that PyScript.net <laughs> is what interests me because PyScript.net yeah. Could be where web sockets and fetch are, um, and so that will be uh, an extra. So you import socket, web socket, fetch, and so and all other things. And for storage, we could import the current storage, local uh, IDB storage, what 
however you want to call it, and the eventually in the future SQLite out of the box if it's there. Um, what about, what about well, so SQLite? SQLite is rather database than storage. So for me, storage is that it actually can persist. And so I don't know here if we should mix up the current storage and also the database but, story. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wonder about that because looking at the PyScript.noun.verbs, PyScript.storage works, but then what are the verbs here? Uh, it, it, currently, we the do, thing is, we do the right so thing, I feel, here already. You can sort of, you know... Uh, so in this case, current storage needs to be to be initialized asynchronously. You can't just yeah. import yeah, yeah. The, the storage as it is because you need to pass also eventually some option and that thing. So um, yeah, the thing is the noun dot verbs is tricky, right? Because PyScript dot page, I've got verbs and other nouns, right? Mm. PyScript dot page or PyScript UI, I've got find, which is actually a verb, but I've got body, head, button, div. Yeah. So. I think that noun dot verbs is a tricky one to try and use to classify. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> uh... like, so for, me, for example, so my question is: so where would where where would workers live in this? Work, the, the current workers. Yeah, I mean, so, so say, like, where, or just in general, like, where, how would I say, if I want to deal with workers, do I say from PyScript.workers and then everything to do with workers is it within that namespace? I don't know. Right now, workers is, uh, is, a, is an entity, a magic entity with full name it workers, and you import from PyScript directly. Actually, you asked for it. <laughs> so, from PyScript. Yeah. Yeah, that exactly. So PyScript.work. Yeah, so perfect, right? So, that's a, that's a module. But that could be in web. I don't care where that lands or where it is. If it I, if it's helpful for web, uh, maybe maybe it could be there too. I don't know. It feels I like it know. should it's be its own, it's own, it's own, it's own That's what we're trying to do, trying to clean up, right? So yeah, yeah. but it's not gonna happen entirely in, in right now, I think, also because we are fifteen minutes out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Time. I, okay, oh, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's here's a suggestion then. This has been a really good conversation and i think we've we've unblocked you martin in terms of pyscript.web in that you know and what i will do is i will share that fragment of markdown as a gist and paste it into into discourse so folks can have a look so so, what do you, so, so in terms of packaging though and everything so do you want me to just create instead of, do you want me to move what's currently the pyscript web package into a single file called yes. web.py yes I think that's 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 what we were sort of that's I think that's what we said um, and it's certainly what I wrote down anyway that's what I understood I think the second thing that we can do though it feels to me you know that game where somebody draws a haircut then they fold the paper over then somebody draws a face and they fold yeah. it over somebody yeah. draws a neck somebody draws the shoulders and what you get and then at the end there's a kind of a big reveal and you see this weird monster um, we need a similar process because I think what we do when we're talking about APIs like this is we get hung up on each other's ideas. Now, I know that given half an hour and a stiff drink, the world would be fine and I'd have Nicholas's version of how the API should look. And I know Andrea and Martin, you would have the same as would Fabio. And I know because the four of us are experienced software engineers, we would be able to talk our way through the justifications of those things. But I also know that I wouldn't have thought of some of those things that Andrea has thought of and vice versa and so on and so forth. So I think the exercise that we should do is a little bit like that game where we go away, we create yes. our heads and tails and knees and toes or whatever it is, okay? And then at some point next week or the, or maybe, you know, in another call, um, we, we, we spend 10 minutes each just going through, this is how I think the API should look. And these are my reasons why. And then in a kind of like a three or four way merge, <laughs> we go, well, these are the things that are the same. So let's keep all of those. We all agree on those. These two are exactly the same, except Fabio's called it widget and I've called it widget. So let's just call it widget. Um, these are different. Now the fun begins. And um, in that way, that process means we focus. We can throw away the non, 
uh, problematic things. Um, and we focus on just the, you know, and we can pull in the best of, of each, if, if that makes sense. As that as an exercise is the next thing to move on. And I can also, as a, in terms of community engagement, say, hey, you see this flat structure? How would you organise it? Answers on a postcard to this address, please. Yeah, yeah. yes. Because we've got, yeah, yeah. I think we've got some really experienced developers in, in our Discord channel and they have good opinions, good instincts that we might miss. Um, does that sound... So we've, we've unblocked you. We've made a Blue Peter competition for sending a thing uh, with the API redesign. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, good idea. So I just want to make sure that my web... I'm not causing problems, Andrea, for you in terms of the package, because I don't know how the packaging bit, the roll-up works. So if it's just web.py, we're good. Whatever you put in there is going to be packaged, so All right. don't worry about it. It's just, awesome. it's literally just turned into a string and then unrolled. It's rolled up and then it's unrolled. <laughs> and then, but sometimes, yeah, as, a, as, a, as a, an aside, at some point, what I want to do is strip that module before we package it, strip comments out of it. Okay, so this is something That's that Andrea and I have talked about, is that there are already Python package strippers obfuscators um that sounds yeah. like the worst nightclub in the world but you you know what i mean um uh th that already exists that we can put into our kind of build pipeline that will take away comments will make everything as single line as possible reduce the spacing to just one significant space for indentation so you, you know space is saved as much as possible um if we could have um i mean i'm okay with Python way, but because we're bundling with uh, all the roll-up thing, if you could have some JavaScript that can be hooked into the roll-up dance, uh, it would be awesome because we, it's part of the build. Otherwise, we we, we, we can do that in in, a, in many other way, other ways. So it works anyway. Yeah. So I couldn't find a good one to be honest. I, I tried to look for a minifier for Python, and apparently that's not a thing because nobody ever cared. Rightly so. I mean, yeah. if it's on the server or on the board, then it gets somehow already optimized in uh, because there is this uh, you can compile with dash o one two three right and so nobody nobody really cared. About so so here's before. the thing, you could we could compile pre compile to bytecode. Yeah. Can well, I so what I I I wrote one the other week just as a messing around right and I just used in um, a little script that just does ast convert it to an ast and back again. And you can and you can ignore comment or whatever. You can ignore doc yeah. strings and and I, I'm not sure if even comments are in there. But yeah, so you can put at least it doesn't do all the rest of the minification, but it pulls all the doc strings and the and the and the comments out. So that's that's dead easy to do there, right? there is, as, a, as a baby step. But yeah, I'm sure there's there, there, there are existing there. modules. I found one that to me looked good. I'd be interested to see Andrea if you'd found that um as well i'll need to dig it out it's in my bookmark somewhere as something to you know on my kind of radar as it were but um yeah if you have anything i can i can try it i yeah, mean yeah. it's it's uh, yeah, it's something it's i would like to do because otherwise it's a blob uh, as a json and uh, it doesn't look good yeah <laughs> yeah i mean the, the, the it, point, it's just bigger for no reason well the point is about bytecode there are advantages and disadvantages um the bytecode is different for micropython and pyodide yeah, but so we need get, to. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Things. So you'd need to know which which one you need. But the bytecode will be significantly smaller, and it will mean things will start faster as well because there's no longer a compilation step. We, we still need to. So we need to say the way we are doing things. We are saving stuff as a bytecode, and that has to work. So we just import from uh, PyC or MPyC. I don't know how how is the bytecode. But we, we, the bootstrap dance is that we have our JSON blob. JSON blob is file content that is 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 uh, saved into the virtual file system, and then you are, we have our own module system yeah, yeah. in there. So yeah, but whatever what makes saying, that uh, process that much faster, uh, yeah, it's, it's surely better. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that if you replace the .py file with a .pyc, it looks exactly the same. So. Okay. Uh, and not for MicroPython or for MicroPython too. Both, both, yeah. In fact, that's that's a trick that MicroPython does a lot, because um, you can actually compile MicroPython without the compiler, 
but with just the interpreter and you pre-compile your Python code into into uh, bytecode, put the bytecode onto the board and then the interpreter runs. You, you, so you're it, it, when you're in very, very constrained uh, microcontroller situations. Um, that's actually how MicroPython in space works, apparently. Okay. Um, I don't know. We, we, we can try yeah. a few things. Uh, yeah. The easiest we, we, we one is I just think that, that, Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. That, yeah, the, the, the easiest thing is to... Let's use that thing that I had a look at that does something that similar to what Martin said, and we can have a look at that, assess it, and then minify um, through that. But I, I know it certainly strips, strips all the comments, and it will put things on a single line as possible, um, and it will also um, swoosh the indent to one space rather than four. Yeah, um, that works. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll try and dig that out and share that. Um, I'll put that on my to do list for. Oh wait, wait a second. No, never mind. So, if a module, if a file has uh, one in, one space indentation, and it imports something from another file that has four spaces indentation, is that, is that makes no work? difference? That... It just has to be yeah. consistent uh, within the source code file. Within the file. Within the file. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh yes, man, yeah, yeah. can you imagine the amount of complaints Guido would have had if he'd not made that the case? <laughs> or perhaps yeah, yeah, it yeah. was originally yeah. like that, and he changed it like back in 1992 because he was so fed up of all the complaints he got. But uh, yeah. Oh, but so, right, I need to double check because there's some code that we inject at runtime out of other code, but probably there shouldn't be an issue. But anyway, I, yeah. I, I would like to try um, too. Yeah, we can have a look. We can have yeah. a look into this. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to stop the recording then because it feels like we've finished. Um, this yeah. is uh, a kind of like a, oh man, it's doing that thing again. It won't let me alt tab. So what am I going to do there and stop?